Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode the first thing we need to do is get the egg back over to Kerbin and we have a lot more Delta V than I thought we would have and that's because we transferred the very heavy machinery out of this. The machinery is actually pretty pretty heavy uh, so and that complicates the ability to get more of it over here but for now that means that we have a lot more spare Delta V in this vehicle which is good and so let's see if it can get through deadly re-entry but first let's get it off of uh, the ground here so yeah we've got uh, the egg to do and then I think I'll have to take care of some contracts we've got a lot of funds but uh, as I'll show you in the VAB once we get back uh, these this machinery is not only very heavy it's also very expensive so Perhaps a little bit more of a fun buffer would be the best thing to go for at this point if we're going to really supply this machinery directly to our base instead of like uh, trying to manufacture it on the ground. I think there is a module for that, but trying to figure out how those connections work is, uh, is a job for another day, uh, especially since uh, they don't actually consume the machinery. The machinery is a resource that just sits there and doesn't get consumed so I think just transferring it to the base will be a little bit more uh, efficient in, uh, at this point in time and uh, just to be clear in space here not right now I'm not getting low frame rates it's only when I'm on the ground that it's really a pain uh, right now uh, 30 frames a second and uh, there is no debris or useless craft on the ground at the uh, base everything there is functional so even the gold bug such as it is is functional I cleared up the gold bug debris but the gold bug itself is still usable so can't real and it's got kerbals in I think so can't really get rid of it it's got a lot of life support supplies too we could transfer some of that but I don't think we can transfer all of it let's take a look at our life support actually it's a good thing to do no crew in emergency habitat Lunar Station 1 has 157 days, Kerbin Station Core has 479 days, the Kerbitat, that's the base, that's the main base, 113 days, uh, and that's two crew. Duna Station has 508 days, the CRT with one crew, that's around Duna, 706 days, the Gold Bug, as you can see, 235 days with three crew, so it actually has more supplies than the Kerbitat itself and then the power plant beluga power plant Be no that's that's the moon master the moon master has one crew 135 days so yeah i mean uh, quite a lot of resources in the gold bug there whoa 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 camera weirdness okay again when i when it decided to switch camera because we made orbit it decided to shove us into the vessel for some reason it's probably because this is the root part. I don't know what that has in relation to everything, but that's probably the only thing that has changed. Right, All the other pieces I've used before. This is the only piece that I haven't used in the previous vessel. So I think it's the cause of the camera being wonky. That's just logic for you. Okay, so we are headed back to Kerbin. I'm going to want to aerobrake into orbit around Kerbin first not go straight down and that'll lighten the impact of since we have extra delta V it's possible and it'll lighten the impact of the reentry heating so I'm gonna go for a high position here so that we can aero break and if necessary we can do a burn to finish up the uh, tight orbit it's not just getting into orbit around Kerbin of course we'll already be in orbit around Kerbin it's a matter of getting into a nice tight orbit around Kerbin and so I'm going to go for about 36 kilometers and that should not bring us all the way down and it should also not be too bad on the re-entry heat okay 36 kilometers as advertised okay Headed out for interplanetary, uh, not interplanetary space. Uh, what is it? Cis lunar, sp uh, cis moonar space, I guess. 
the space between the moon and Kerbin. We've got 20 minutes to periapsis, so definitely have enough battery life. No problems there. Okay, so now the question is what part is likely to be the hottest? Tank, the engine, the lights. Uh, I'd say the pipe endpoints. Actually, should, should have probably removed those. Let's focus on the pipe endpoints. My guess is they probably don't have more than 800 degrees worth of resistance, and they might be going through a lot more than that. No, it looks like it's more than 800 degrees for those. That's good. I don't like pipes that rupture at a mere 800 degrees Celsius. Okay. It looks like we've survived that. But that was pretty hot. And usually bringing it all the way down is much, much more, much more thermal much more active in terms of deadly re-entry. I mean, we only burned off, what was what it, maybe 400 meters per second, 300, 400 meters per second. And we've got the other 2,800 worth. We're not even in a particularly tight orbit. Given the position of the KSC, I think I should just go for one more pass here at this altitude, the same periapsis. At least we know the re-entry heating isn't too bad, but uh, I'll... Oh, I actually managed to be in range for aerial surveillance of that location that location or which location? One of the locations. I have no idea which one I could have been in. But alright, well that's interesting. Didn't realize you could do it from 200 kilometers or so. Okay, I think this will do a good job for our orbit here. I think it will be sufficiently tight this time. So now we can plan to hit the KSC. I'm going to set the moon as a target to get our inclination right. It looks like a good way to go would be to lift our orbit on this side and do the inclination change from apoapsis as well. I think we'll still remain in space, but just barely. So tighter than I had intended. Okay, yeah, this is too tight. I need to boost up right now. And, uh, maneuver I've calculated isn't correct at all. Okay, here we go for inclination change and periapsis lift. Okay. Descent burn plotted. We'll have plenty of delta V left over. Actually, while I can, let me take a look at the map. Oh, I think we're overshooting. Actually, it'll save us some heating if I retro burn a bit now. This is a test, so I don't want to necessarily do everything in my power to avoid the heat. Which would mean sh slowing down at this point. We've got some rotation. Something is unbalanced so that it's actually tending towards pushing us away from the retrograde vector.
So if I rotate, it tends to be deflected a bit. Okay, while well, we're through without any anything blowing up, that's pretty good. Okay, at this point I can put landing gear down and parachutes. Parachutes. Huh. Okay, parachutes deployed. SAS off. Now, what sort of terrain are we over? That's the question. No idea. Oh, well, I can check here. Haha. <laughs> Water. I forget, I'm not in stock. I got that thing going for me. Water. All right, well, let's see how it survives a water landing. Okay, that's it. Flop. Nothing got damaged by the flop. Everything seems to be intact. And recover vessel. Okay, so... Five science back for recovery of vessel return from the surface of the moon. I guess we haven't been bringing much back from the surface of the moon, have we? Um, 32 parts, four resources recovered, 85.6 kilometers away from the KSC, 94% recovery value, 11,000 funds. Okay, so uh, successful return of the egg. We had a little bit of delta V buffer left, so if we really needed to slow down more, we probably could have. So yeah, I think it was a good test. So let me show you why I'm having a little bit of trouble with the machinery thing. Okay, so let's get at the egg here. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Well, I could just scale this... Whoop. Okay, there we go. Uh, I could just scale this can up, right? Because we've only got 156 machinery here and we need a lot more right to for the base and rather than do a whole lot of egg launches I should just scale this up to the next scale and launch that well this right now is 26,000 funds our mass is 15.2 with the egg component if we take the egg off this is the egg and we can take off that this actually has a probe core in uh, it's uh, 3.1 tons so 3.1 tons for this container and this container alone is 16,000 funds. It's mainly the machinery. So if I take the machinery out, the empty can is 4,000, which is pretty expensive for an empty can. Uh, the full can is 16. Now let me scale it up. Aha. Okay. So this is scaled up one and it's all the way at 2.5 meters. It is now 25 tons. Right, so this was 3 tons, 25 tons. We've got 1,250 machinery, which I'm sure we'll be able to use, mind you. But the cost is 133,000 funds just for this. And then we have to figure out how to launch it. And the cost of the machinery itself is, I mean, it's, it's 100, almost 100,000 funds. But the empty can is 34,500 funds just the empty can so yeah that means we probably want the can back um, that's a very expensive can so but if we want to create a reusable system to bring this back that costs even more money right I mean upfront upfront money and then we'll get it back at the latter half but uh, we need to think about that it's a thing to do surely it's something to consider, but it's uh, something I might uh, need to do some testing on, which means we might lose a few. Uh, getting this empty can back through re-entry heating might be a lot trickier than getting the egg back. So that's another thing. We might actually need to slap a heat shield on it. But 25 tons, wow. I mean, of course we could fill it halfway, and then it'll be a lighter mass. But then, on, on the other hand, uh, it's not very cost-efficient because the can itself costs 34000 and this will be 82000 if I fill it to 600 let's say. So, yeah, I mean, I could do that, and it might make sense to do that, but I'll have to think about it. So I want to give some time to think about that uh, before I decide whether to go with this. Obviously, launching, uh, like, uh, pelting the moon with eggs is probably not the most interesting thing to do. But then again, I've got this little gap. Now, 
There, it, there are other containers, and I've been playing around with these, but there are issues. So let's say, where are my containers? Okay, here's still those parts. Here, there's these radial supply tanks, and just to save us from confusion, let me get rid of this for a sec. Let me get a probe part. Mm, let's just get this one. And then let me show you what's up with these radial tanks. Might have been fixed. Might have been fixed in a more recent version of this. Because uh, I don't think I have the most... Well, I'm running 0.25, right? So I don't have the most recent version. Now, these radial tanks are very cost efficient. Right now, these uh, have oxygen, water, and food. Let's, uh, let's actually go to... Oh, I think I passed it. Oh, no, I think it can just carry machinery. Here. Right now it's carrying the machinery, it's uh, 1,200. Now this is uh, 1,200 here and 1,200 here, which means 2,400. And it's only a little bit more than the cost of sending just the 1,200 with the other can. So that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Uh, let's get it down to uh, 600 or so. And so here uh, it's 1,200 combined and it's only 60,000 funds. So why can't I use this? Well, the reason why I can't use this is ev evidently, well, first of all, it's very massive, and it's huge. If you uh, talk about radial tanks, you need at least two. But the problem is when I go down, aha, oh, that's, that's, gonna, that's a recipe for cheating, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so if you empty it of all machinery, uh, you get negative numbers, which means if I launched these, I would get uh, 36,000 funds back. <laughs> So, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the math on these tanks, and probably fixed already. Let me, I mean, uh, I, I'm sure somebody has pointed this out already. But, yeah, so I can't, I would love to use these, but I can't because the, the math isn't right. Also, you'll note that it doesn't size with tweak scale. So, that's another problem. If I could tweak scale these down, that'd be great. Now, does it happen for all the textures? Not so much. Uh, this structural parts is on, only goes down to negative 378. Uh, these electronics, actually the base cost it gets down to 11,622. Uh, this one actually has a really high, insanely high base cost. Something about the equation for this is very, very wrong. Um, here, oxygen, water, and food. Well, that works out to be like oxygen, water, and food don't even cost very much at all, and the tank is very, very cheap anyway. So it's like these resources about 300. But yeah, that's about the size of it. Uh, thankfully, waste does not actually cost money. That makes sense. But maybe that means that the base cost really should be about 2022. I also wonder about the base cost of the other cans, these guys, these storage tanks. But uh, yeah, these, this refining one, wow, that's expensive, isn't it? That's with the supplies, though. That's with the chemical exotic minerals. Uh, no, that's empty. Wait a minute, hold on. Let me check that out. Okay, refining can. Okay, that's empty right now. This cost must mean if it's full. Let's see. Sorry for taking time on this. I'm just insanely curious about these things. Yeah, if it's full, then it's 703,000 funds. And maybe someday we're going to need these. So, uh, so yeah, I want to take a look at the contracts to see what we can do to make money. Because some of this stuff looks really expensive. Okay, so I've already taken a look at these contracts and I've considered the situation. And... Mainly what we see here is that we've got a lot of EVE contracts that are very interesting. We can put an orbital station around EVE, we can explore EVE, we can position a satellite in a specific orbit of EVE, and we can position a satellite in a tundra orbit around EVE. The problem is that we are a long way off from EVE transfer point. The phase angle is totally off. Uh, we'll basically have to wait for an entire orbit of EVE to get around to the same place, and that's more than 100 days. So we've got a bit of a problem there, and uh, yeah, that's about the size of it. So we can pick up these contracts and aim for a big EVE extravaganza, and even putting an orbital station around it, though uh, I don't fancy landing Kerbals on EVE. Uh, 
uh, particularly. We will land probes on Eve, that's obvious. Um, but that's not going to be... Well, well it will uh, give us a lot of funds initially. We will get a substantial advance on these contracts. And uh, if we do complete them, we're going to have plenty of science as well. Uh, duration, 7 years, 7 years. Uh, this is infinite and this is 10 years. So I'm going to pick those up and plan to do uh, put two satellites, a station around EVE and do some uh, science in orbit around EVE and on the ground. So yes, 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 and yes. And we'll do those uh, possibly as soon as we can get supplies to places, right? Uh, let me move this. Uh, okay, move that to the side. And so, no, it doesn't, that's the configuration window, it's not what I want. I want the actual list of uh, when things are going to run out, but we've seen that already in this episode, and we've seen that there are some places that will be in trouble in 100 days, so I've got to pay attention to that. Now, we've got some other stuff already here, but this Eve collection is really tantalizing. Um, I don't think there's anything that's really pressing oh, science data from space around the moon that's a running gag uh, I've, I've got these aerial surveys we almost accidentally did one but what's really interesting here is this build new orbital station around the moon that gives us 200 science and all we need is a station orbit around the moon that has power and ten docking port has a facility supporting at least nine kerbals we don't actually have to send the kerbals and we neutralize the controls for 10 seconds so yeah, I think this I'll do this in this episode. Um, we've already got a moon station, but uh, auxiliary moon station isn't a bad thing. And so we'll try and get into orbit in a different orbit than the existing moon station so that uh, it can facilitate other... Uh, maybe, you know what? Maybe it should be at an inclination. Um, maybe that'll help for future missions to uh, higher latitudes. We'll create a key thing mining support station for higher latitude locations and I think that's going to be what I do alright so let me accept this contract and try and build something like that okay I think I have to unveil this even though I'm very nervous about it very nervous this is a very tall station as you can see this whole thing is the station we've got the the habitation ring there we've got a curbitat here with some solar panels we've also got the full quantity of machinery so we won't have to supply this with machinery I've also got a storage container with the biomass that it needs so hopefully it'll be able to it doesn't need compost at all I don't think so I don't think it said it needed compost so uh, I think it's got what it needs to uh, make food it uh, it's supposed to make food so it'll have uh, punch cards because we're sending two Kerbals in. It has the spare parts. So I think it's okay to uh, be a habitat with food production. So we've got that going for us. It's, uh, yep, uh, let's just make sure spare parts are there. Uh, it'll consume those pretty quickly though. So yeah, so it can make food. It's still got a lot of food though. Uh, in fact, uh, 355 days worth of food, uh, water, and oxygen for the two crew members. Though not as much if we were actually sending the full complement of 12. The habitation ring can carry 10, by the way. So that'll satisfy the supporting at least 9 Kerbals thing. Uh, now, we've got the carbonite tank. We've got a carbonite converter. We've got a full-size carbonite distiller to make monopropellant. Mono and so uh, that'll be a highly efficient mob propellant converter so we've got that and we've got a fuel tank and here we have the first use of a LVT-95-8 liquid fuel engine assembly which is this fellow right here uh, it's optimized for vacuum thrust and ISP so that's the idea it's got a little bit of fuel with it it's got some gimbling and I thought it'd be a good addition to this, especially since it's flat. Now, I could have put the radio ones here, th these guys, but they wouldn't really give much delta V, so I decided to go with this instead. Uh, we've got mod propellant tanks so that the mod propellant converter hopefully will be able to send it to those. Uh, I don't know if that'll work out without some additional... Maybe I should put some fuel lines just in case. Uh, sometimes that helps. So let's just connect those up with fuel lines like that. 
and let me for symmetries no we can't connect it the other way around okay good all right so we've got that we've got a stage with a skipper here and here is our normal return package so we're going to try and return the first stage uh, with the uh, probodobodyne octo uh, SAS module a reserve fuel tank let's reserve that and uh, radio shoots so that's all all in there now this is the stage and I've named it Kermit because it's not easy being green it's especially not easy being green when the top diameter is three meters and the bottom diameter is five but I decided to try and use yet another new piece that's sort of the theme of this thing this time and that's this stack octo adapter and if you want to stick a 2.5 meter thing in the center and 1.25 meter engines on the side then you scale up to five meters and that's what I've done here so this is the way to fit it now of course I could have gone with my old thing where I used the aerodynamic uh, tail thingamajigs where are they this, this tail connector and use that to uh, connect up the LVT 30s here but th that does have drawbacks that thing's mass is 0.4 tons this thing is only 0.2 so uh, you add eight of these and that's 3.6 tons and so it's it's pretty beneficial to use this instead if you've got a rocket the right size now you might wonder why didn't I just size the top bigger and make everything shorter and of course that's because these fairings are still limited by the tech that we've got. Uh, so I need to unlock, uh, unlock whatever tech will let me extend them beyond the 3 meter size. And so this interstage adapter is also the same way. So that's the situation there. And then we've got the lander legs, sized to 200% size. And so this is the way I'm going to turn it this time. Uh, again, trying everything uh, always coming up with a new idea of how to return these things and that's the idea but I have not seen what this looks like with the full fairings and it's bound to be a little bit disconcerting ouch <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty disconcerting I'll say and probably needs a lot of struts probably needs a lot of struts there But no matter, we're going to try it. Hmm, yeah, we're going to try it. It'll have to be an abort to orbit if uh, we can't get the Kerbals. I mean, we've got the Kerbals in, so it's abort to orbit or nothing. So uh, we're not going to bring this stage back down all the way from space. It's going to be FMRS within the atmosphere this time. I don't want it swaying around when I light the engine, so I'm just going to have it all staged at once. So... Hopefully we'll use this launcher with something less tall later on. This is quite unsightly, but let's go with this for now. And I, I, it would have been, looked a lot better if I could just expand these stages, uh, and especially this inner stage adapter, to beyond 3 meters. But this is what we have to do right now, and hopefully the 200 signs we get from doing this will help unlock that tech. Alright, so with that, let's go. Okay, I time warp to daylight. Wow, we've got a lot of resources. Why don't we have all the water that we should have? Oh, the storage tank. The storage tank. Okay. That's fine. Okie dokie. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Oh, Bob and Bill. Hmm. You know what? All right. All right. I think it's time to send Bob and Bill over there. Yeah. Yep, it's time to commit our, our top top men here. All right, all right. SAS on, thrall is up. FMRS is armed. Okay. I am not going to turn very quickly with this. Uh, needless to say, with the really awkward payload, even though I made sure to put the lighter bits on top, it's still a little bit unwieldy. And so I'm going to turn late even though that we, uh, even though we have uh, FAR installed here. 
Ooh, overheating is bad. Well, as as we gain some acceleration, I'll I'll throttle down. Looks like overheating isn't getting too far off. I think we can keep going like this. Looks reasonably well controlled despite its ungainliness. Well, we really need to start rotating now. Sense a bit of a wiggle. I think I can drop the fairings now. They're huge though. Ah, no, you know what? Let me wait. Because the first stage might get knocked by them. Okay, first stage set. Okay, we've got that going for us. Let's, while we're coasting, drop the fairings as well. Okay, very good. And we're just uh, coasting the Wapsis and we will then complete the burn. If the moon was poking above the horizon right now, I'd burn straight for it. Well, this is going to be a wonky orbit, but I'm not uh, bothering with that right now. I'll let it go a little bit wild on the Apoapsis side. Where's the moon, incidentally? Eh, it could be worse. Okay, let's shut it down there. So, we're in orbit. Just barely on the periapsis side. A little bit high on the apoapsis side. But, uh, that's... Alright, we should be burning close to the periapsis side for the moon anyway. Alright, so, now, the other part of this. At least, uh, Bill and Bob are in orbit, and we don't have to worry about them falling back down again. So, that's a plus. I mean, when testing a new launch system, anything can happen, of course, and uh, you have to worry that your Kerbals are gonna perish. That would not be good. Okay, not the radio chutes, I want the tank. There we go. Good, good, the fuel is still there. We don't need it to deorbit or anything, but it'll be nice to be able to cushion the blow as we hit the ground because we are going to be hitting water actually so the landing struts aren't gonna do as much of a job on that as I would like there's always the floppy possibility it could flop but we've got a lot more weight down there now this tank I don't know but uh, you know these parachutes may be heavy We'll see. Oh, maybe we'll make it to that continent, actually. Hmm, let's see. If we could do that consistently, that'd be great. You know, we're, we're not too far off. Let's see how it works. If we even get close, maybe I'll launch this with a deliberate attempt to land it at this other uh, peninsula. Not really a continent. The first is re-entry heat to deal with. I don't know, uh, with everything overheating on the way up, I don't know how it'll be on the way down. It's this stack octo adapter, perhaps. Maybe it conducts a lot of heat. Okay, here we go. Re-entry heat still increasing speed here. Ooh, temperature is getting pretty high. Let's go with this landing strut as an indication. At least parachutes are alright, but the engines are sort of important. Whew. Hot, but not bad. Not bad. And it looks like we're landing on ground, I think. Not much time to get the parachutes out. But we're good. 
on the re-entry portion. G-force is not too high either. Just waiting for a speed where I can deploy parachutes. Okay, uh, I think I better do it now. Parachutes. No, 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 no. That was too early. Uh, I thought at the lower level we'd be below Mach or something, but no. Oh, heck, I can't even get it straight up. Shoulder survived. Um, yeah, so uh, maybe a little bit more reserve fuel. More reserve fuel so that we can slow down on the descent so that we can release the parachutes earlier. Because we were getting pretty darn low and I still wasn't able to deploy the parachutes. So we really needed to bring it down to, as I've tested before, 280 meters per second. And uh, I just wasn't feeling that we would have enough time for the parachute because the real shoots take a little bit of time to slow you down. I didn't think that they'd be able to do that uh, with the altitude as it was. But uh, landing struts doing their thing there. Anyway, uh, well, let's. Should we try again? No, no, no. Let's let's jump back to the main mission. I'll pick up the pieces later. It's, uh, well, let me try and recover vessel, but it's probably going to crash the game. We'll see. Okay, so the game did crash, but uh, we can proceed with our mission at hand. It turns out that it was, it's still all right. In fact, I think the, um, the first stage is actually still on its way to the peninsula, but we're not going to try again on this one. I think uh, there are some fixes that I need to do to that stage to make it work out better. And so I'll go with that. They're mainly adding more fuel. Um, and uh, perhaps we shouldn't burden it with quite so big a load. Uh, the station itself is more than 35 tons. So that's quite a lot to carry. And especially if we're going to boost it to the moon. Which we are. So let us target the moon. And aim to fulfill this contract. Not too bad. We need it pretty low for a real carbonite mining station though. Don't want the carbonite miners to have to get into a high orbit in order to rendezvous with it. Well that will pretty much expend this stage so I think that's a good way to go. Okay, moon's above the horizon and we go. Okay, I've expended that stage. Let's see how we did. Uh, pretty far. Alright, well, anyway, we're on the way there. You know, uh, thinking about it, I could have... Well, let me just uh, dump this stage now. Uh, hello. There we go. Um, thinking about it, I could have just uh, gotten a module of a station that could carry nine kerbals into orbit around the moon and then later docked it with our, exi our existing lunar station. So it would just be a new module for the lunar station but uh, temporarily it would act like a totally new station. And that could have been a thing too. Probably would have been cheaper, I mean in terms of facilities we really, I mean having a second facility may or may not be helpful, we'll see. Uh, again, putting it into an inclined orbit uh, would be good because it will be able to service a lot more of the landscape. Okay, so let's just start out by bringing that in a little bit. But we also want some inclination now. Yeah.
So there we go, a high inclination orbit as advertised. I think that'll be good. Not crazy high, but but different enough. So this will be a low station, I think. And I'm gonna put it at a 46 degree angle. That's fine. And its altitude will be 32. Yeah, let's let's make it circular at 32. It's going to be a very close station. Quite a view of the moon, I'm sure. Oh, I should have put lights on. I didn't put lights on, darn it. Does this module have lights of its own? No. Crud. I'm gonna have to send some lights over and maybe have the Kerbal's EVA and slap them on somehow. We'll see. Or just a new module. It can be expanded on one end, it's just not the other. Okay, let's uh, get retrograde. So yeah, new lights, a lighting module on one end with perhaps some other facilities. Okay, now this has the uh, little container, but the container is not the root part. So, so I'm guessing that it's the whole thing where I put the made the storage tank the root part on the on the egg that might have been the problem with the camera. Then again, it might be that this one is 2.5 meters and the other one is tweak scaled down. That might be a big issue. All right, that'll do. 30 by 35. Give everybody a little bit of room. Let's bring it over to the bright side. Okay, stabilizing physics. I'll turn SAS off. And I have to wait 10 seconds. Okay, done. Bill and Bob have fulfilled this contract. We've got 200 more science. Uh, probably just enough funds to pay for this thing. And let's deploy the habitation ring. Very good. And let's see if they can start working on, uh, on being a habitat. Not enough punch cards. Punch cards depleted. Governor. Let's deactivate habitat. Punch cards. Aren't you guys supposed to be making punch cards? Or maybe, or maybe that requires a colony control. That requires a colony control module. Okay, so we'll have to attach a colony control module so that they can produce punch cards and get on with their business. Otherwise, we can't have a proper habitat. Okay, but we're closer to having something produce something than uh, we have had with uh, the MKS or OKS systems. Because I remember to put the habitation, the, um, the machinery and the spare parts and all that and the biomass. So we're close. We're very close. All right. So uh, contract filled and perhaps after I get some food, water and oxygen issues settled and try and send some supplies, we will be able to probably to the Kerbitat mainly. Lunar Station 1 as well. We will be able to uh, tackle the the Eve contracts. So Eve contracts are a major thing because it's pretty easy to send stuff over to Eve as long as we got the timing right. And we've got a lot of contracts uh, giving us a lot of stuff to uh, do that. So yep, that will be my next thing. So with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.